Who here likes history? Raise your hand. Who here likes history about politics? It's okay. I don't find it that interesting either. My history usually involves wars and people killing each other. That's what entertains me. So, but despite that, I felt like doing American presidents. Who, because let's face it, we don't know a lot about them. We know, if I asked you to list some, it would be George Washington, Abe Lincoln, uh, Teddy Roosevelt, and that one guy, JFK, so that. And then if for recent presidents, it would be Trump, uh, Obama, some Bush guy, and uh, Bill Clinton, yeah. Feel like that. So, so pretty much, now, I don't need time for three presidents, so I don't, there's a lot more I could have put up here. Like, if we did another of these, that'd be like part two with Andrew Johnson, Warren Harding, and JFK. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just put it in presentation, you Yeah, that'll help a little bit. Okay, Andrew Jackson. If you haven't heard of this guy, that's okay. Hey, uh, hey, of course, what he's really known for is founding the Democratic Party and destroying the second United States Bank. He's also known for being a former general, being the hero of New Orleans, because he won the Battle of New Orleans, which was the last battle of the War of 1812, which is where we fought the British a second time. Anyway, pretty much. Now, he is nicknamed Old Hickory, why does he have the nickname Old Hickory? Because he used to have a stick made of hickory and he beat people up with it and pissed them off. Oh, free my link, I'm sorry. Right. In fact, he was so foul tempered that he actually taught his parrot how to swear, and during his funeral, they had to take the parrot away because it wouldn't stop swearing. Right. He's also the first president. Well, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. He is actually, some people believe he fought somewhere around 10 to 100 duels. At least one of them ended with him killing a guy. He got, during his duels, he actually got a bullet around his chest, another one to the arm. He's also, believe it or not, there's a lot of presidential assassination attempts. We only remember the ones that are successful, but there's a lot that weren't. Andrew Jackson is the first to survive an assassination attempt. An unemployed a British painter, a house painter, named Richard Lawrence, suffering from mental illness, who was, he was convinced he was the rightful heir of the British throne. And it was, it's kind of complicated why he wanted to kill Andrew Jackson in the first place, but pretty much Jackson was coming out of a funeral. I want you to imagine he's this pale, scrawny, 67-year-old man. And Lawrence pulls out a pistol and fires at him. Click. There's no bullet. It missed fire. Andrew Jackson, like any politician, responds to this threat by Yes, so he's like, did he run? No, he takes his walking stick and he charges his would-be assassin, who also draws a second pistol, which incidentally misfired. Now, some people say that Jackson actually tackled his opponent and beat the living crap out of him. Others say that he was pulled off before he got the chance. Now, you should know this guy. Right. Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, pretty much. But he is remembered for is several things, building the Panama Canal, well, overseeing it anyway. And he also led the Rough Riders during the War of, uh, see, I don't know, Spanish American War of 1899, or 98, that's okay. Yeah, he's known for leading them up San Juan Hill and doing a lot of other things. In fact, he coined the phrase, uh, is speak softly and carry a big stick, which was actually a phrase from Africa, but he made it popular. Here. Now, what I really want you to remember about him is that all his other stuff. See, there's so much that it just goes off the tape, so I'm sorry. Uh, pretty much, he is the first American to be a uh, brown belt in judo. He's the first American to will, win the Nobel Peace Prize. He also lied about being the first unit up San Juan Hill. An all African American unit beat him up the hill, but he left that out in his report. Uh, now, granted, He's not really a coward because he actually quit his job as a head of the, the naval secretary. And he quit his job to, be cut, to pretty much enlist in the military in the first place. And in fact, another thing, he actually, after, sorry, after 
he was no longer president. You know, his term is over. He actually ran again, this time with the Progressive Party, which was a party at the time. During his campaign, he survived, he's another president who survived an assassination attempt. Another guy, mental illness, it's actually pretty common assassination attempts. And he was shot in the chest. There we go, anyway. Because what actually saved his life was his little case where he kept his glasses. That in a 50 page speech that he had folded in there. Now, and after he was shot, what do you think he did? Did he go to the hospital? No, he actually went and gave a 90 minute speech with the bullet in him. Then he went to the hospital. Oh. Well, Lyndon Baines Johnson, Democrat, he actually uh, took over presidency after JFK was assassinated. He was his vice president. And pretty much he is famous for, well, well, pretty much his Great Society plan, which was pretty much to get rid of poverty and racial injustice in America. He also, in fact, he declared war on poverty. He also escalated America's involvement into Vietnam, which a lot of people don't like him for that, for obvious reasons. Yeah. He also known as LBJ. He is known for being pretty much a bully, getting his way, and pretty, he would even invite people to have a conversation with him on the toilet, just to make them feel uncomfortable. Uh, and pretty much, and he was actually jealous of of, war, of JFK performing because JFK slept with so many women during his presidential seat that we lost track. LBJ wanted to top that. In fact, he referred to every woman he ever affair with as harem or harem. I don't. And pretty, much, he also known for recalling his nether regions jumbo. <laughs> I'm not making that up. He actually called it. In fact, he reportedly would show it off sometime. And some reporters kept asking him, why did you send troops to Vietnam? He responded by pulling out Jumbo and saying, this is why. <laughs> As my dad would say, you can't make this crap up. Only he wouldn't use the term crap. Uh, 